want to show you a couple new features in Rails 3.1 dealing with authentication. Now we have this page right here where Gandalf is asking, is it secret? Is it safe? And the answer is no, because this page right here is accessible to anyone who has knowledge of the URL. So we want to add some authorization here to ensure that only certain users can access this page. And for that, we need some authentication. Now, the simplest way is just through some quick HTTP basic, which Rails 3.1 gives us a new way to do this. So all you have to do is go into your controller and add a quick call to a class method, HTTP basic, authenticate with. And then you can pass in a name such as Frodo and a password. We'll give it the ring. And you can also pass in only and accept options to restrict which actions it applies to. But this will apply to every action in this controller, including our little secret page. Now you'll probably want to move the name and password into some kind of external config so it's not floating around in your source code. So now when I try to visit that secret page, I get a login dialog and I can just type in my username and password here. And then there I go, I access the site. I think HTTP basic is a little underutilized because it's so quick and easy to add. Uh, just whenever you need something private, just consider using it. Uh, especially in Rails 3.1, it's even easier. But sometimes you do need a full uh, user authentication system with multiple users. And to help with that, Rails 3.1 gives us a secure password. Now I'm a fan of creating authentication from scratch like I showed you in episode number 250. And Rails 3.1 makes this quite a bit easier. I'll go through it quickly here. So the first thing to do is to generate a user model and we'll give it an email address. And we'll need to store the password in here as well. And the important thing is to make a column called password digest and uh, Rails 3.1 will use this. So the name is important, but you can customize it. And then we'll migrate the database. And then inside your user model, you can add a call to has secure password and that'll make a password accessible, uh, add a password confirmation validation, and add some authentication functionality into this, and it'll use that password digest field in the background to uh, store the hash password. Now you'll likely wanna add a validates presence of validation as well on the password field when you're creating the password. And that's about it as far as the password goes. Of course, you'll wanna validate the email address too, but I won't get into that here. Now to speed things up, I've also created a user's controller off camera. As you can see here, it just has some basic new and create actions, pretty standard stuff. And it also has a sign up form here, which just contains some email and password fields, uh, pretty standard. So now we can try filling out this form and signing up a new user. And you can see if I type in a password which doesn't match the confirmation, I get a validation error, which is automatically given to me by the has secure password setting. So if I just type in a password which matches and then create a new user. Uh, it signs up that user. This just happens to be the root URL. So it brings me back to this page. Now I created the login form off camera as well. It's very simple. It just has an email field and a password field. And notice I'm using form tag here and not form four because this isn't really a resource I'm editing here. And I have a sessions path because this is backed by a sessions controller. And let me show you that. So in here I have a create action for logging in and a destroy action for logging out. And you can see I have the create action partially filled. I just have this little placeholder for handling the authentication. And if they're authenticated, I wanna set their session. And if they aren't, present an error message. So this is where it gets a little interesting because this is where we take advantage of what Rails 3.1 gives us with secure password. Now the first thing to do is to fetch the user which matches that given email address. So we do find by email that given email address. And then we can authenticate it using this method called authenticate, uh, which has secure password gives you. It's an instance method and then just pass in the password as an argument into this and it will return true or false depending on if the password matches the digest in the database. And the user might be nil here because we're just using find by email. So we can just ensure that a user exists here as well. So that's all there is to authenticating through a secure password. So we can test this out by logging in here. Let me type in my email address and let's type in a false password at first. And it says invalid email or password. Uh, type in the proper one, log in. And now it says I'm logged in. It just took me to the root URL. So it looks like it's working. And just for completeness sake, we can add a little more code into our application controller. 
uh, just to make this current user method available so that we can access the user which is currently logged in through the given session. They're really simple to create your user authentication from scratch. What I really like about the solution is just how simple the user model is. It's just two lines here, and in the solution I showed in episode 250, it was one of the more complex parts of this authentication process. Uh, so Has Secure Password is a really nice addition in Rails 3.1. Uh, one solution we probably should add here to our user model, though, is an attribute accessible call just to ensure uh, only those attributes are settable through the user registration form. And that's pretty much it some quick authentication from scratch. Now, if you're handling authentication, you likely don't want to be sending your user's passwords over the wire in plain text. So it's a good idea to use SSL and switch over to HTTPS. But you always had to do this manually or use some kind of plugin before, but Rails 3.1 brings us a, a nicer way to do this. So all you have to do is go to any controller that you want to protect and add a call to force SSL uh, as a class method here in your controller. And you can do this in specific controllers. We could just add this to the user's controller and the session's controller. And you can add only and accept options as well, like any before filter. Now with this on there, it'll only affect production and testing environments, not development. So I've rebooted my server in production environment. And now when I hit reload on this page here, you can see that it redirects to the SSL version, HTTPS, uh, and it server doesn't respond to that, but it is working here. So in production, uh, it should work fine with forcing SSL on all the pages. And that wraps up this little episode on showing you a few new additions in Rails 3.1. We've got HTTP basic authentication, uh, has secure password authentication, and force SSL. And all these really help in making our authentication life a lot easier.